Shalom. Call Laimla Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Rakan Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Citations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, The Harvest is Great, but the Laborers are Few. <coughs> so every man should be pushing this word, pushing this gospel. All hands on deck. Especially if you understand this word and can receive it. Go to Matthew 22, verse 2. <coughs> the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his messengers to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the marriage. This marriage is being joined back to this word and preparing ourselves for that great wedding day, that great getting up day, to meet our Lord and Savior in the air. The kingdom of heaven. Matthew 22, verse 5. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So many are mocking and scoffing, coming against this word. And in the old world, actually kill the prophets, <coughs> rejecting the word made flesh and rejecting this truth altogether. Let's go to verse, verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. So the chariots of fire are coming back to judge the evildoers. So the Lord is coming back with the hosts of heaven, the chariots of fire, the so called UFOs. Let's go to verse 8. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. So. This is what the men are commanded to do, to teach and to push this word daily. Let's go to Matthew 25, Let's go to 15. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So if you've been hearing this truth, and if you can receive it and understand the full doctrine, then you are holding on to a prized possession. Let's go to verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So every man is apportioned out a certain level of un understanding measures of faith. Let's go to verse 16. So that journeyman is Yahweh Shai. So we are all apportioned out certain levels of this oil. Let's go to verse 16. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he's gathering the hopeful elect by doing the work investing this word wisely, getting the return on the investment. 
verse 17. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dig in the earth and hid his Lord's money. That's you men sitting back, not doing the work, sitting on this knowledge and being cheerleaders on the sideline, not investing this money, going out and doing the work. Let's go to verse 19. <clears throat> After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckon with them. So Yahweh Shai is going to get his payment in blood. That's why he says in Ezekiel chapter 3, warn them from me so that your blood is not, so that their blood is not on your hands. So we're supposed to warn the flock to get the blood off our hands. Every man should be doing the work, putting their hands to the plow, not sitting back and just observing or spectating. Let's read this again. <coughs> Matthew 25 verse 19 After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them so he want his payment either your work or he's going to get blood let's go to verse 20 and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying Lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold I have gained beside them five talents more his Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So you have to show your faith and fear of the Lord. Well, we show our faith by putting our hands to the plow and putting forth the work. <coughs> Matthew 25, verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there has that is thine. So if you are sitting on this wealth of information, if you're sitting on this gospel, you are trying to rob God. You're trying to rob Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, by not feeding his flock, feeding his lambs with words of everlasting life. Matthew 25, verse 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. So he's better off not even giving you this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because you're not investing it. So he wants his return on his investment. Let's go to verse 28. <clears throat> Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. So many brothers fall out. The Holy Spirit is taken from them. So they lose their ability to interpret or comprehend or understand this truth. Let's go to verse 29. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you're not warning the people, if you're not prophesying, the work if you're not feeding or edifying the body which means to build this tabernacle then you are trying to cheat or deceive the spirit of the Lord let's keep going let's go to second Timothy two verse one now therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in my God and the 
things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we should be teaching with this treasure, a treasure tool of understanding, not just sitting on it or trying to hide it, sitting on the sidelines, stunt down to the bottom. <coughs> Second Timothy 2, verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, say what? Apt to teach, patient, all men, all hands on deck, apt to teach, apt means aptitude, having the ability to do so. Let's read it again. Second Timothy 2 verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So we help to warn the flock by teaching and preaching. So this word is a safe haven, a place of refuge, rest and relaxation, comfort. Let's go to Ezra 7 and 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. So what good is you having this information sitting on it and not teaching? Will a man rob God? That's what you're trying to do. <clears throat> Let's go to 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, before the Most High and the Lord, Yahawashai, Hamashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine so we're supposed to teach the word most of these other camps they wait till it's sunshine outside where they can have a picnic where it's beautiful outside but all year they've been hiding they've been hiding six to eight months out of the year and they just wait to spring or summertime to come out and teach that's an unfaithful servant or a sunshine prophet that's a false prophet Let's go to um, Ezekiel 3 and close out here. Ezekiel 3, verse 11. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Well, the children of the captivity are the children of Israel that were taken into captivity, servitude, being afflicted, oppressed, in bondage. The captive daughter of Zion, the captives. Let's go to verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. This is what we men are commanded to do. It's not an option. It's not a spectator's event. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thy warn the wicked, and turn not. Verse 19. So this is how we get the blood off our hands. This is why we teach and preach in season and out of season. Let's read that again. Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, 
thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So this is what we're commanded to do, to show our love and faith and fear for Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, to feed the flock, <clears throat> feed the lambs, and to warn them of the dangers and said perils to come upon the earth. So the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Hashem, Rakakadash. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing. Kwame Yasharala. And Abad Baba. Barakatam. We got next. Lord willing. Shalom.